Today, guys, you join us at SGGT, where you have seen mid handicap Dave get fitted here. But if you're looking for new wedges, if you're thinking what wedges should you put in your bag, should your wedges fit in with your set, then that's exactly what we're talking about today in this video. If you're thinking about getting new wedges going into 2025, then this is a fitting that you need to watch. So we will go first of all and look at the large selection of wedges we do have here at SGGT. So Lawrence does tell me who's doing the fitting. We have over 4,000 different options here in wedges. So you might just think I normally have a 60, 56, 52, and then I go into a pitching wedge. But here we have all sorts of different grinds, different bounces, different shafts, which again, in this fitting today, I have already done and has been eye-opening, just like in Dave's fitting, how a shaft can make so much difference. So let's get into it. Is it 10S, no real? Yeah, full face grooves. Um, shaft, S4s? S400s, yes. Standard length? Standard length and lie. Right, so going from what we've, we've, we talk about with the current set, so we're just gonna get you in standard um, lie and standard loft on here. So we've gone with the 5810S in Avoki. Uh, you play S400s, we've yep. got the tour issue in there. It's pured as everything is in our matrixes. Um, so I'm just gonna change the lie angle here, just get it a, up at 64 degree lie. You say, what would you say is the biggest thing you see in wedge fittings? Is it lie angle you're changing? Or do people change lofts much? Or do they stay normally what they've already got in the bag, would you say? For me, I think a lot of people, they need, they need to have the discussion about understanding loft and choice of loft. So if you have your most lofted club as a 58, I always ask the question, why is it 58? What's the justification for it? If it's just for getting it up and over things around the green and it's not for a very set specific yardage, then why is that club not a 60, which would make your life much easier in getting the ball elevated and up and off the ground without having to manipulate it as much as you would a 58? So it's just understanding that. And I think a lot of people as well typically play like a, a standard progression straight off their irons in terms of lie angle. So things yeah. get steeper as you go shorter through the set. Whereas, again, understanding sort of technique and, and how people stand to a ball, most people with shorter wedge shots get a little bit more flex through the knees, hands get a little bit lower. So actually, sometimes most people need sort of like a reverse tapering of the lie angle, maybe flattening them off so that the most lofted club is a little bit flatter in lie than what you would typically have it. Yeah. Um, and again, if you're not using it for full swings, etc., cetera, we, we do get a little bit closer, knee flex and stuff like that. So. I, it's understanding what you do with your wedges and how you deliver them is, is sort of our job as fitters and then trying to analyse how do we best suit the, the wedge for you. But yeah, we'll talk a lot about loft and lie and things and then shaft is, is a little bit of feel as well, but trying to find the, the right sort of weight within there and then get you some something that's going to hopefully help you deliver loads of spin and get you some, some extra stopping power as well. All right. Perfect, yes. And out here, guys, we do have a grass tee pending down here at the South Chesterfield SGGT. So, again, that'll be for irons and wedges out there, Lawrence. Yep, so irons, wedges, woods, fairway woods, hybrids. Yep. Again, what we want to, to give people is that opportunity. Turf interaction is massive. You know, we, we've got a really good mat here in the bay, but physically feeling that golf club in and on the turf is, is massive. So that's just been built. That'll be ready for the start of next season. Uh, we do have a short game area over in the, in the other part of the facility, uh, which we can use and chip and pitch on and stuff. But I think a flat, proper fairway style uh, area for people to hit irons and wedges off and your other sort of turf interaction clubs is going to be great. Perfect. 58 degree. We're just going to start with SM10. Yep. 10 degrees bounce. S grind. So they're very staple gr uh, grind in there. Um, S400, standard grip, standard length, just like you said, that's your current spec at the moment. So yeah. what I want you to do, we're just gonna get you to play a few sort of pitch shots towards that, that second white flag just on the mound there, okay, just yeah. past the 50 yards. So we'll play about four or five shots to there. And again, premium balls here down at SGGT. So we're using a golf ball that I use at the moment, which is the TaylorMade TP5. What other golf balls do we have? Uh, so we've got TP5, TP5X, Chrome Tour, Chrome Tour X, 
Pro V1, Pro V1X. So six options available at the moment. That's something that most people don't take into account, is it? Because obviously when you're on the range, you're not hitting range balls. Big difference in range balls? Yeah, I mean, we've done testing and we see big variance in ball speed, launch angle, spin. And yeah. when you're thinking about club fitting, they're your three main areas that you're looking at. Yeah. So if you have variance just due to whether it's the wear on the ball, you know, some ranges they'll have a, a mixture of one piece, two piece and, you know, different covers and stuff like that. What we want is to almost get you in that consistency, get rid of one of those elements of, of yeah. doubt. And we feel a, a premium ball really helps with that. Also helps you understand what the actual feel of the golf club is going to be like as well. And also your distance probably on the golf course as well, how consistent or inconsistent it is. Yeah. Because it, it could be you, but also the ball. Okay, so we've got sort of five pitches there. Um, we'll just bring up your sort of averages. Yes, that was the pattern that I certainly felt on the... Yeah, so place. obviously looking at your delivery and, and where we are sort of strike-wise, we look at the line angle. If anything, you're a little bit shallower than what you would be in sort of like the static build of a golf club at 64 degree Lionel, we might want to look at maybe flattening that off a fraction for you. Mm. You do descend quite heavily into the golf ball as well, so we may look at introducing a little bit more bounce for you, maybe a shaft that might do something a little different. And the lowest part of your, your arc of stroke is five inches past the ball. So again, for me, I look at sort of like sole width and also the, the sort of volume of bounce that we have on there. Um, so first of all, what we'll do, we'll have a quick look at shaft see whether there's something in there that A, might help with the strike, B, might apply a little bit more spin and maybe launch it a little bit sooner uh, or maybe even shallow you out a little bit. So we'll have a little look at those bits first. And spin-wise though, obviously everybody always asks about spin on the channel. Would you, is that a good number for a 50, 60 yard shot? Is that high, is that low? What would you be um, maybe expecting? I think if we, if we got a slightly cleaner strike on there, sort of mid 9,000s would be very good for that sort of, okay, it's yeah. all relative to speed, Yeah. right? So if we look at your club speed, 60 miles an hour, if we could get you sort of over 9,000, brilliant. But again, it's it's this probably part of the number as well, how consistent is that spin? Yeah. There's no point us finding 9,000 if there's a thousand lots of, de uh, a thousand revolutions of deviation in there, because ultimately that's, that's one release in 10 feet more than another. And ultimately, that means that you're not going to get as consistent a short game as you probably want. Yeah, exactly. So, shaft? So, same length. Um, we're going yeah. to take a little bit of weight out there. So, okay. from what you're in in the S400, which is a very popular model of shaft, yeah. uh, especially for sort of high-speed players, it typically sits in and around um, where players are either playing like a 125, maybe 120, up to 130 grams sort of iron shaft. Yeah. Um, if they're playing X-Flex, this will give them something slightly softer, helps them with, with spin, but they have that dead weight, so it allows them to get that consistency of feel. Yeah. So again, very, very popular. You'll see lots of players on tour using S400, etc. So we're going to go down into 125 in the high rev 2.0 from KBS. Okay. A shaft specifically built with a slightly softer tip section to help generate a little bit more spin. Okay. Um, so you'll see the stepping pattern gets a little bit denser through this, this lower area of the shaft. Yeah. Hopefully... We'll see how that impacts. It should introduce a little bit more spin for you and maybe shallow you out a fraction at the bottom. Perfect. Right, so here we are. Go play that same sort of 50, 55 pitch shot with this yeah. KBS shaft and really want your sort of feedback from it as well. How yeah. does it feel? How does it feel for you, the turf, etc.? cetera? Um, does it feel like it's doing anything different from that S400? So I felt more out of the middle of that one. Yeah, a little higher strike as well. Yeah. That was towy again, but how much lighter is it? I can feel like it does feel a little bit lighter, but I don't know. So about seven grams, five, seven grams. Yeah. I 
I prefer that launch. It's, it is jumping up a little Popping bit. Popping it more, up that a little bit yeah. earlier, isn't it? You can see the strike's a little bit higher up the face. Yeah. Uh, spins a little bit higher. It shallowed you out a fraction as well. Okay. Your yeah. low point's got a, a little bit closer to the ball. So all of a sudden, that shaft being marginally softer in certain areas is helping you deliver a slightly more higher lofted shot. Which is again something that I found interesting with Dave, how it changed obviously his driver flight, certainly more than anything, but even the irons, but the shaft to change it that much without doing anything different really. So again. Can't blame the shaft for that one. I'll delete that one. No matter how good a player you are, you could, there's always a delete in there. Okay, good, good initial pop up off the face again. So we're just gonna go in and check the five shots against the five shots. You can see there, the strike pattern's got a little bit higher up the face, a little bit close, closer to the middle of the club. Spin has stayed relatively similar. Yep. Um, your sort of angle of descent has got marginally shallower from a slightly slower club head speed, which I'm not overly concerned about. Height wise, you put another three feet of height on there. Your land angle, so this number here, you've got another two degrees steeper into the ground, so that's going to give you some stopping power. And that initial launch has gone up 1.4 degrees as well. Mm -hmm. So it does go to show that actually shaft can have a, quite a significant impact because this is a very short shot. It's a very significant impact on how that ball is projected off the club face and also your impact itself. So it's helped you find the centre of the club, get that ball a little bit higher up the face, which ultimately is going to help you generate a bit more spin as well. Yep. Perfect. I mean, yeah, that did feel good. Where would we go? So there's here? lots of different options. Um, so from here, would you still be thinking about potentially a wider sole on there? Again, that's got 10 bounds. Yeah. So, I've, you know, for me, I'd probably look at maybe jumping into like the D and the 12. OK, but we'll get the we'll get the shaft right first and then we'll yep. move on from there. Perfect. So what we don't want to do is move the shaft too far away from what you're currently playing. If we go too light, ultimately you start to lose that dead weight mass of the golf club. When we do that, the problem with it is it'll feel so different from your, your full swing golf clubs. So when you do need to play it for a fuller sort of three quarters to full swing shot, ultimately you don't have that same sort of feel from it. So you may become a bit more inconsistent. Mm -hmm. So that's a good start for us at one, two, five. Um, the other option is we've got a Modus 125 here as well. Um, a little bit stouter through the sort of handle section for me personally. Um, but again, very similar sort of profile to what we just had in that KBS. So next one is a, a product from BGT. So it's a zone shaft, 130 grams. So similar to that S400. So you have a carbon upper sleeve here on a very stable lower. The, the section that you have through where it connects is really, really stable. It's a super thick section of carbon there that basically acts as a bit of a dampener, but also gives you loads of stability. So very interested to see how this works for you and whether we see any changes in ball flight. Yeah, this is the one that I was looking forward to. Oh yeah, certainly feels... So it'll feel different through Ooh. the stroke as well. Yeah. Again, if we don't get the shaft right, the shaft could also influence sort of like bounce and grind as well. So it's always worth getting the, the shaft done first. Yeah. So very different feel to yeah. what you would get from, a, from an all steel product. Okay, mm. good amount of spin, very central centered mm. strike there. It's a strange feeling, but I don't, I, again, launch is touching 30. Yeah. I know it's a little low on the face, but still quite central. Yeah. Y angles changed as well, hasn't it? Very much a higher flight from this. Yeah. Speeds up a little bit. Spin certainly up as well. Yeah, touching 10,000 on the spin there. Yeah, 
a lovely shot. Yeah, certainly fine. It's easy to find the middle of the face with that. Yeah, you feel that. Yeah. So the technology is built about trying to give you that consistency of striking the middle a little bit more. Yeah. So we can definitely see that that's had an impact straight away. Strike pattern is very central. Yeah. Um, I think obviously getting used to it as well, it does feel very, very different, especially if you're transitioning from a straight steel shaft as well. Uh, spins up on where you were, launch is quite consistent and similar to what you were doing before. Land angle 41 and a half, so still quite steep. Loads of stopping power on that. Um, low point is it hasn't changed massively from where you were with that, that, that S400. So the sort yeah. of impact characteristics haven't changed. We've just found the middle a little bit more, found a bit more spin. Yeah. And a little bit more initial elevation as well, which is always good. So if you look at your other really good option, which was the KBS High Rev 125, yeah. you can see launch very, very similar um, in terms of 28.6, 28.2, spin 9.3 against just under 9,000, um, land angle 41.1, 41.5. So again, lots of stopping power from all of them. Spins there. But the delivery has changed a little bit. So you see now just over one, one and a half degrees of angle of attack change. And that's KBS is a little bit shallower there. Okay. And then sort of like the low point is going from 5.6 beyond the ball with that BGT shaft to 4.3. So again, it shortened it up just over an inch yep. um, there. Both gave you a much higher strike pattern and more central than where we were with that S400, which probably might just be a little bit too too much weight in there for you yeah so yeah let's try something else right so another good option for you the 120 la golf wedge shaft very very stable again through the tip section full graphite construction mm -hmm. um shaft that bryson uses and and so on you'll see more and more guys leaning towards this graphite technology in my opinion i think it's okay. just one of those things where you get more consistency of spin you'll see a little bit more elevation initially. So let's see how you get on with that one. A little bit lighter than what we've tried, so. Okay, how much lighter than the last? Is it much lighter than the previous? 10 grams. 10 grams. Fair enough. Highest launch yet? Yep, definitely. I didn't feel I had much. A bit off the bottom. Yeah. Certainly tell the difference from the previous. Yeah, that launch is certainly up on that. Thoughts on this so far? How does it feel? Uh, after the last one, it does feel a lot lighter. Yeah. I know it's ten. only 10 grams, although... 10 grams is quite a lot. Yeah. So it's just under... You know, it's, it's about 8, 7.5% of yeah. what you were originally in. So, so you can certainly feel that straight away after it, that strike-wise has been good. So I like that flight. A little down in spin though, on yeah. where we have been, with a couple of the other options. And launched a wee bit flatter as well. Yeah. Just seeing it come out that little bit lower. And again, just that little bit of inconsistency, so probably just a fraction too light for you. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think, I didn't feel I had as much control of that one. I'd say. Okay. So for me, I, I really like that BGT option. Really yep. good. Great numbers coming out of it. Um, obviously, cost-wise, it's, it's one of the more premium options available. Yeah. But I would say if you went for that KBS high rev, you wouldn't have any sort of issues whatsoever. You'd still be quite consistent. Okay. This one's just sort of like tipping it over a little bit, a little bit more spin, yep. a little bit higher launch. So when we're looking at a higher lofted golf club, you're just going to see that little bit more stopping power yeah. and help elevate without having to manipulate the physical club itself. Yeah. So from there, 
I think looking at how you deliver the club and your angle of descent, so your, your attack angle and sort of like the low point, I think we do need to look and, and try and get you a little bit more bounce in the hand. So I'm going to try the 12D. Okay. Um, so it has a little bit more bounce through the overall performance of the golf club, but then it has a little bit more camber through the heel, so more relief. So that allows you to manipulate the club face that little bit more if you wanted to, um, so that if you do open it and so on, we just get that little yeah. bit more play out of it. So... With that, I've also flattened you out a little bit in line. So okay. gone into 62 and a half lie, kept it at 58, same shaft. Perfect, let's see. Much softer through the mat. Yep. Hear the sound there? Yes. Totally different. That Launch up over 30. Mm. Good, like that. Plenty of dynamic loft. And you'd like to see, what would you like to see on that as a launch angle for a 58 degree? I know it's obviously dependent on your angle of attack, but... I mean, physically you want it as high as possible, right? Yep. Um, but for you, with sort of how much dynamic loft you're presenting, if we could get it to like 31-ish, okay. 32, yep. potentially, we'd just see you jump that spin up a little bit into those mid 9,000s. What I, what I quite like is you've lost that sort of harshness of the contact. Yeah. It's much softer. Certainly feels totally different down at the ball. Yeah, a bit softer through Yeah, which is, even like you say off a mat, a lot of people say they might not feel it, but you can, you can feel that straight away. Yeah. The ball flight's a lot more consistent. Mm. Yeah, it's only fluctuating about a degree as well. 0.5 either way. Yeah. It's good. I like that. Spin wise, a little down. Yeah. But again, I think, you know, if you don't have this this particular club for a particular yardage, say three quarters, it's a 75 yard shot that you that comes up regularly within your round of golf that you're very reliant on trying to hit all the time. I'd always question why you're in 58. Yeah. Why not 60? Mr. 60 himself He's is in the corner. I don't need a 60. But why make it hard? Exactly. 64. I wish James had stayed next door now. <laughs> How did that feel? I, I like that, to be honest. I, don't, I, don't, I think the flight was consistent. Yeah. Like so it didn't the, fluctuate much. No, I mean, your initial launch was very consistent. Spin's been very consistent. Peak height's been consistent as well. Um, yeah, for me, probably... We'll try the K, which is a little bit more sort of static bounce on there. Yeah. But it doesn't have as much relief. So if you are going to play it quite square faced, or majority of the time more square faced, yeah. it might suit you a little bit better. Okay, yeah. Okay, interesting that. Came out a little bit flatter. Yeah. One of the lowest launches you've had today. I think you've got a little bit steeper there, potentially. Yeah. Is that because of how it potentially looked at address? The leading edge will sit a little bit higher off the turf. So. Yeah, yeah, I feel like it is probably the lower forward pass. So it sounds a little thin again? Yeah. So this is where we've potentially put too much bounce in your hand? Yeah. So again, lots of fluctuation in launch. Yeah, not quite. I try to not forward press it. Yeah. Because of the last two. Yeah, I think you're just gonna look down at that and probably feel a little bit uncomfortable, and try and find a way to make it to feel comfortable and get it to work. Yeah. So we're gonna try that D grind in the 60 and see whether we can control the height a little bit better. If it gives us benefit in terms of how it's gonna land, whether we're gonna see an increase in spin. And if we do see a consistent increase in spin, then it's something that you might want to consider if you are yeah. going to change. Would you then consider changing the one position fitting after that? Going yeah, so obviously you'd look at see where your pitching wedge is and, and yeah. how many wedges or your, your whole sort of setup of the bag and where do you go from there? How many wedges do you put in? What wedges fill the gap appropriately? Yeah. And it's understanding you know, where you play is do you need more wedges or less wedges? Yeah. You know, how regularly do those sort of yardages from the pitching wedge to your, to your shortest wedge? 
how, how regularly do those yardages occur within the round. If it's a lot, then you might want to look at options within there or better options. Yeah. If it's very seldom, then you probably want fewer options. It's just understanding where you are and what you play. Yeah, where you're going to gain the most. Yep. Just looks better. Yeah. So you're getting up at 32. Yeah. A little lower in spin, but. Yeah. A little bit shallower. Not bad. Like that. Big fan. Although it's the two degrees, it is much easier there. I'm not trying to help it up. No, we're seeing a, a higher peak height and a much steeper angle of descent. So if anything, you're going to be more reliable at stopping it through the trajectory of the flight instead of always having to rely on spin to have it stop. Yeah. So spins are obviously only relevant if the, ground, if the ground's receptive. If it isn't, then you need that, that sort of trajectory to stop it. And I think that's where a lot of average golfers, everyday golfers, would benefit more from landing angles and spin potentially. Yeah, definitely. Because if they can get it up and landing steeply, they're less reliant on strike because yeah. if you've got the, the trajectory of the ball flight nice and high and coming down steep, if you catch it a little bit out the toe and it doesn't spin as much, you've still got the stopping power of how the ball's flying than having to get it in there and get that ball spinning on the surface. Yeah, lovely shot. Yeah, what still wasn't like, say, the well, now the middle has still got that. That was a prime example. Yeah, still higher through the launch than where we have been with other with yeah. the 58, definitely, and still a nice steep ang angle of descent. Even though it was a bit toey, didn't quite have the spin, but still plenty of spin on there. Didn't quite reach the peak height we've been achieving, sort of 42, 43, but still stopped quite nicely. Yeah. So obviously, then you've got options in terms of like loads of different heads from manufacturers. Mm -hmm. So. Obviously, we've used the Vokey, nice and easy, simple, you know, just quick and easy for me to pick out and, and get what we wanted. From there, we've got loads of different options available. So if we wanted to go into sort of like that higher bounce sort of option, you've got your Milgram 4s. So again, your sort of similar one would be the HB12, very, very similar still. Even with the mill sole, you can see the camber through here, a little bit more relief, very, very similar. Um, and but ultimately every manufacturer has something that's that's applicable um, that you can work with and like I said at the start our guys up in the build center can do bespoke grind so if you see something like maybe we needed that K but just with like a pre-worn leading edge so where we yeah. take a little bit of the front edge off or, or so on the fit can always help you with that and, and discuss it it's something we can definitely do so yeah do you want to hit a few different heads yeah, well, guys, we're going to have a play around with this. So I'm going to get some heads tested now. And what we're going to do is when I receive the wedges, we're going to let you know which ones we went with. So, Lawrence, thank you very much. Nope, thank you very much. Always a pleasure to have you down. And uh, where shall we start with these wedges? Should we go with the Tailor Maids? Tailor Maid it is. 